I'm in London for the launch of this thing, the new Lotus Electra, an electric Lotus SUV, a company that's all about lightness and sports cars. An electric SUV doesn't exactly scream the Lotus formula. Well, this is it, but unfortunately we can't really see it at the moment because it's surrounded by a massive crowd. So there are a couple outside. Still think it's gonna be pretty busy, but let's go take a look. So let's get a closer look. The big kind of theme that Lotus is going with with the Electra is air, and it's absolutely covered in ducts. So not only do we have a vent around here that's channeling air around the side of the car and out the flank, but we've also got grooves in the bonnet too, sending air and channeling it over the top of the car. And I guess when you've got a lot of weight to deal with, with an electric SUV, the best thing you could do is make it as aerodynamic as possible. And what do we think of the design as well? So we've got this really kind of sleek grille that runs along the front of the car with a bit of meshing at the bottom. Now, obviously being an electric car, this isn't designed to feed air into an engine and cool it down. It's kind of partly done to cool the batteries underneath the car, but again, just to channel more of that air around the car. And it's if I really bring it down here, you can kind of see some of those ducts working. Now it's at the side here where we can kind of see a more rakish roof line. It's all about that kind of sports car feel, even though it's a big electric SUV. And another thing you can notice from the side here as well is the really short overhangs and quite a nice long wheelbase, which should open up much more space inside the car. Now, something else that Lotus points out is that the windscreen is kind of further towards the front of a car than a traditional combustion engine because you don't have an engine up front and therefore you don't need to accommodate for that engine impacting on the cabin. And therefore, it says that you get a more mid-engined kind of sports car feel from your SUV. Not entirely sure that's something I believe. I mean, it's a big car at the end of the day, but it will definitely help with weight distribution and more importantly, it'll give you more space on the inside. Again, to kind of really go big on the airflow, you've got these really thin wing mirrors. They're not mirrors, they're cameras. Whether that make it into the production car, I really don't know, but it'll be feeding a video feed from here to the inside of the car. Kind of a bit like a Honda E, but shh, don't say that around Lotus. And hey, check out this really sleek light bar that runs across the width of the car. And it's actually part of a line that goes all the way around the side of the car. And just take a look at this rear wing. It is absolutely gorgeous because it's not actually connected across the car. It's these two separate elements. It almost reminds me of the front wing of a mid 2000s Formula One car. And you just got these beautiful little flicks that come up at either side. And this bit in the center, well, that's a sensor for the semi-autonomous driving modes. And you've also got another one at the front of the car too. I finally got a relatively clear shot at the back of the car. Look at the vents at the side there. Again, channeling air towards the back and getting as much of it around the car as possible. Because also, not only does airflow improve the handling of the car, but when you've got an EV, it just helps out eke a bit more range out of the battery. As you could probably tell, it was getting pretty difficult filming the car with so many people around, and we weren't allowed inside it either. So I'll run over the interior in voiceover. I was able to poke my head in through the door, and this really looks like the most luxurious interior from the company yet. Lotus says it uses, and I quote, an advanced wall blend fabric on the seats, which is not only more sustainable than leather, but it's also 50% lighter. Leather should also be available though, as it was in some of the cars at the launch event. The interior styling is striking, with an LED strip that runs along the width of the dashboard, plus there's a floating centre console which is all in the name, again, of saving weight. There's also a fair bit of tech too. That big screen in the middle of the dash is a 15.1 inch OLED infotainment system which folds flat when it's not in use and there's a very minimalist instrument panel, a bit like the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Lotus is calling the Electra the world's first all-electric hyper SUV, and when you see the numbers, it's not that hard to see why. It's keeping its lips sealed on the technical details of the Electra's motor setup, but it does say that the electric SUV will go from 0 to 62 in under 3 seconds and has a top speed of 162 miles per hour. It also claims that power outputs will start from 600 horsepower, so we might see a more powerful model available in the future. 
As for the battery range, the Electra will come with a battery pack that's over 100 kilowatt hours in capacity. And Lotus is targeting a maximum range of 373 miles on a single charge, which is about on par with the BMW iX. The Electra also supports 350 kilowatt charging, allowing you to get 248 miles of range in just 20 minutes, providing you can find a powerful enough charger, of course. I think really the crucial thing is going to be how much does it cost and also how much does it weigh because Lotus has talked about an electric SUV before and they do say it's going to be lightweight. I see some bits of carbon fibre on there but I just don't know how much it's going to weigh yet. We also know that Lotuses handle brilliantly. Is it going to be the same thing for the Electra? Again, going to have to wait and see, see what it's like behind the wheel. First impressions though, I think it looks pretty smart. Maybe not distinctly Lotus, but they're trying to move in a new direction. And also they've really pushed on the GT element of Lotus's range here at the launch. And I think really that's what they're going for. Something with a bit of leather and something that feels luxurious. And from my first impressions, that's exactly what the Electra feels like. So please subscribe to CarScore and stay tuned because as soon as that thing hits the road, I'll be in it.